even if you don't agree, you have to definitely admit that, you know, it's it's making these exotic car manufacturers nervous. We'll just put it that way. I'm not going to lie, guys. I never really thought that I would see the day that you could go straight to your local dealership and literally just buy a car with a warranty that makes a thousand horsepower that you really don't have to worry about. I mean, we saw it a little bit with the Demon 170 and we're seeing it again now today with the likes of a Corvette that is going to completely shake the performance enthusiast world to its core. So this time we're gonna dive into the specifics of this car. Let's talk performance, features, price, and how it's only legal in 49 states. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you could please hit that like button if you find yourself enjoying this video at any time and always remember to subscribe, ring the bell, you know, all the YouTube uh, house cleaning that we have to do before we get into a video. So the model of the car that we're looking at here is the 2025 Chevy Corvette Yanko SC. And if you wanna order this thing, all you have to do is to head to your local Chevy dealership and place your order. Uh, so digging into the brochure here, uh, first, let's talk about, the, they, you know, they show us what's possible up front this is a very good looking car and uh i like this little warning sticker they have here warning this vehicle produces excessive amounts of horsepower horsepower is addictive and can cause heart palpitations feelings of exhilaration and euphoria pretty clever there and then just a little brief like inspiration if you guys want to go ahead and pause and read this i'm not going to go through the whole thing but it's you know talks a little bit about copo and how the copo inspired these cars and this one we're going to jump straight into performance the meat and potatoes of what makes this thing go uh, just reading from the brochure here, our C8 powertrain is an elegant combination of both precision engineering and art. Our innovative twin turbo design offers both stunning performance and visual symmetry that is impossible to ignore. Available on both coupe and convertible models, this powerhouse features a pair of 58 millimeter ceramic ball bearing water cooled turbos feeding a blue printed 6.2 liter LT2 engine with a forged steel crankshaft. Forged H-beam rods, forged 2618 aluminum pistons, ARP high strength head and main stud CNC ported high flow cylinder heads with upgraded valve train, proprietary ground camshaft, custom intercooled intake manifold, custom valve covers with integrated oil separators, upgraded transmission, upgraded high and low pressure fuel systems, custom tuning and unique exhaust tips. That is a mouthful. So let's break it down. Thousand horsepower through an engine that is not just slapping a turbo on a stock engine and hoping that it holds up it's a purpose-built engine that seems like they invested in the components uh to really make this thing last because that's the last thing you want to do is put out a high power application and when people go to use it you know start having issues before i read about them saying you know this is art um i thought you know this is art like this is a very impressive i always you know liked when people did these symmetrical turbo builds it's just you know an extra step sometimes or extra couple of steps but it just looks so good you could see how they're comfortable offering a warranty with such a high horsepower setup when you dig into the fact that all of the essentials the underlying stuff that people don't talk about uh has been done uh, it should be a really fun car when these things um, eventually start hitting the street. We're going to hop into the visuals next. Before we do that, let's kind of take a second to see where in the scheme of things this car stacks up, right? So we have a list here, uh, the highest horsepower cars. I don't, I don't think this is 100% accurate, but it kind of gives you an idea of where this thing stacks up. So if we look at car one through five here, I have all their, their asking prices pulled up. Lotus Avija, 2.3 million. Ramac Navera, 2.2 million. Hennessy F Venom F5, 2.2, Bugatti, 3.9 million, Koenigsegg, 2.74 million. That's your top five. And, you know, I'm not a huge exotic car person, but just from looking at that, you kind of get an idea of what these top five all share. They're millions of dollars, pretty much. I mean, I know spending 300 grand on a car, like, a, you know, like an entry level exotic even would be a tough thing for a lot of people, but you could stand a reason to, that these cars are kind of a regular guy attainable eventually if you you know you make the right moves and you make the right investments eventually you could drive around in a car like that but these top 5 cars are like an entirely different class like you have to truly be outstanding financially and and own a business or be an heir to some sort of fortune to be able to afford those things then we get into you know Tesla Model S Plaid of course obviously going to be the one of the most least expensive cars on this uh, list here 
thousand horsepower. It's kind of hard to even compare an electric car to a car like this. Uh, but just throwing this in here, um, the Model S Plaid is impressive. I feel like I'm one of the few automotive enthusiasts who actually like uh, Teslas. But to compare it to like a twin turbo beast is like, there's not really a great comparison to be had there. And then we hop from a hundred or a thousand horsepower down to the 800s. Uh, they did leave out the Dodge Demon 170. Um, again, another limited run car that would be pretty tough to get your hands on these days, and they no longer make them. So um, I believe those made, what, 1,025 horsepower, something to that effect. Other cars on the list, we're going to hop into those later, but um, these are more direct comparisons to this 1,000 horsepower Corvette package. We're going to talk about those when we get into the price. And of course, each of these cars has its own market. You know, with something like the Model S Plaid or the Demon, the markets are going to be very different. You know, one's a collector's item. One is a car that is still coming out and, you know, is mass produced. The rest are like very rare exotics. They all have their own markets. The markets all do different, interesting things. Um, but yeah, we'll ta dive into that a little bit more in a second. Let's talk about some of the visuals that you can get with this car. You know, it comes with the Yanko badging. You can get the C8R style ground effects here. Um, but the, the cool thing that I think is is something that could really make your C8 pop is this uh, optional high wing spoiler that comes in a carbon or painted uh, body body paint matched finish. Uh, this front splitter is a little bit more aggressive. You can see here it kind of like wraps up around and it sticks out a little bit further than the factory splitter. You know, touches like that are kind of worth doing with a, a you know a base model Corvette. They can make it look a little bit more aggressive and and stand out a little bit more. I just feel like you know. I don't want to, I don't think it's GM's fault necessarily that the base model doesn't stand out because, you know, it's, it's a base model car, but there's some things like that that you can do that look sleek, can look like they're close to something that came from the factory and make it stand out a little bit more, make it look a little bit more aggressive, but be subtle and kind of, how do I say this, like classy about it instead of something like really bold and annoying but yeah finishing out the visuals you know we get some small things that it's the, the small touches are nice you know the yanko badging um we got the uh body painted uh window panel there and of course all these cars come with the yanko striping kind of reminiscent of the old camaros right um and the custom exhaust tips stuff like that the little things that really make it pop um yeah the brochure tells us it's destined to become a true classic. It's kind of hard when something's marketed as a collectible or an instant classic. It's kind of usually untrue. And, and something like this, that might not be the case. Um, limited run Yanko car, ton of power, like super limited, uh, is going to end up being a pretty cool car. Whether or not it'll be a long-term collectible is hard to say, though. So diving into the styling a little bit more, here's the wheel packages you can kind of get for it. They say they're made from aircraft grade aluminum uh, and available in different styles and finishes. I don't know about you guys. I've always been kind of like a black wheel guy. I've always loved the look of black wheels. Maybe it's like being born or not being born coming of age in the, like, you know, the early two thousands when the whole black on black trend was a big thing, but I've always loved the black wheel look. And I, I think I feel like I like style one and style two, not a huge fan on style three. They're just something about those that doesn't hit my, my brain. Right. Also, here inside we see we get the uh the embroidered headrest a nice little touch right and then of course you know you have all the factory colors that you can get the car in along with uh, a number of stripe colors here um you know I, I do like the yanko look i do like the stripe it's a nice little touch uh i'm not generally one for like a bunch of bright colors though like that torch red to me oh my lord that is a bright color you know what i'm saying that's that is a color right there. <laughs> Orange. Uh, but I do have to say, honestly, even though I don't like bright colors, like when I scroll back to the beginning here, I feel like this car is just like perfectly put together with the dark wheels, the black vinyl, the blue. It all it all goes together kind of nicely. It's not it's in your face, but not super in your face. I feel like the black wheels kind of tone it down a little bit, make it. I feel like I like things that are a little bit more sleek, you know, and kind of like. They pop, but in a way where you have to look at them, not like, hey, look at me, which is, I feel like, what a lot of those uh, bright colors can be, you know, just, I don't know. They're too, they stick out a little bit too much for my tastes. I like some of these darker colors, black, red, and I don't think you, you don't have to get them 
uh, with these combinations. These are just factory colors with examples of vinyl. I like this color, cacti green. Cacti green and carbon fiber, I feel like would be, as the kids say, would go hard. <laughs> um, cacti green and black or cacti green and carbon fiber. Maybe with black wheels, I feel like that would be slick, man. I was thinking when I was looking at this originally, I was like either that or black gloss black paint with a, a satin black stripe on it. That would look pretty cool too. I think what like, and I also like this darker red. What do you guys think? What color combo? So you can take any of these up here on top and then you can combine them with any vinyl. I'm pretty sure <clears throat> stripe colors. So which one, which one of those combos are you guys feeling the most here? Um, I think if I had to pick, it'd be the cacti green with, with the carbon or black. I don't know. I feel like the carbon might be a little bit too much too. Maybe do like the raw carbon wing and the carbon splitter with black vinyl and the cacti green. Oof, that just sounds good to me, man. <laughs> I really like that cacti green color. Uh, so just going through the rest of the build sheet here, we already talked about the engine, transmission, upgraded dual clutch unit in the transmission. Uh, the exhaust is custom dual, ex dual, dual exhaust tips. We got four tips. Uh, brakes are Yanko badged calipers. Um, it doesn't say if they're upgraded calipers. Like the thing is with these Corvettes, I talked about this last time that I made a video about one of Yanko's products with the uh, Tahoe type of setup and with the tahoe setup you don't really need to or you need to upgrade whereas with this corvette like they might put yanko badging on the calipers and just leave the calipers because they don't need to be upgraded you know what i mean um because corvettes come with some pretty stout equipment to start with last but not least the warranty three year thirty six thousand miles for you to go out there and and beat on and hound uh wow i just noticed that and hound on this um, not legal in California. So that's great. So we're going to see a grand total of 60 of these things consisting of 10 examples for the 2024 model year, uh, or what's left of it and 50 for the 2025 model year, very limited run. So the starting price on one of these bad boys is $99,995 plus the 70 grand that the car costs. Now, that's going to seem like a lot, and really it is a lot of money, but when you get down to it, we're going to run some comparisons here. So we're looking at about $170,000 to get into this car. ton of money, right? Um, especially when you consider, you know, you could buy a Corvette for 70, option it out a little bit. Maybe you're getting to like 100. Maybe you guys could let me know in the comments below, people who are buying Corvettes right now, like what are the market values on them? Because I know things are all over the place, but figure, you know, you can get a couple options, get a car for a hundred grand. You're essentially doubling the value of the car, if not more, just for this package. Um, but when you look at the different cars that you would typically stack this up against, it stacks up pretty decently. So, you know, we were talking earlier about these highest horsepower cars. So when you look at cars like the Ferrari 812 Superfast and you're going to have to excuse me because when it comes to supercars, I am lost. I'm in the dark. But when you look at something like the Ferrari 812 Superfast, Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, I know that this is a highly sought after car. Uh, and the McLaren 765 LT, uh, even as somebody who doesn't really dabble in the exotic car world, I know the Aventador SVJ is, you know, a killer out there. Um, but when you look at those, right? So we have the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, half a million dollar car. The McLaren 765 LT, almost 400,000. And this is a 2022 model year. So I'd assume we're up a little bit from them. Ferrari, this isn't even the car that I looked up, but so ignore this one. But these two, like we're pushing $400,000 for cars that make less power. And I get it. Like it always annoyed me when like I bought my Corvette and people were like, well, you know, you could ride around in a piece of junk Fox body with this and that and make this much power for that money. And like, guys, I get that. Like everybody knows that it's not always about the horsepower Olympics. There are reasons to buy other cars besides how much power they make. I don't get me wrong. I love tons of horsepower as not as much as the next guy, but there are other reasons to buy cars other than their horsepower. That being said, how far off are the new Corvettes 
from an exotic car like the McLaren 765 LT. I don't know anything about these cars. How great can they possibly be besides wearing a badge of of a badge of money expenditure, basically saying I spent four hundred thousand dollars on a car? It leads me to wonder: Are they really that much better than a C8 Corvette? Are they? And especially if you have a C8 Corvette that makes a thousand horsepower, like. I mean, even if these cars were relatively close, I think I would take the thousand horsepower over seven. What was it? Seven sixty, seven seventy, eight hundred. You know, seven sixty five versus a thousand. If they're close, I'm taking the, the higher horsepower car. So I mean, one hundred and seventy grand is a lot, but when you look at the comparisons on the market, can you compare a Chevy to a McLaren or a Lamborghini? I guess that that's something to talk about. But you know. I think that this is really making an argument to be one of the best supercars in the game. You know what I mean? Um, even if you don't agree, you have to definitely admit that, you know, it's it's making these exotic car manufacturers nervous. We'll just put it that way. Um, <clears throat> and then there's always the people who kind of say, yeah, well, I could take this or I could find a Corvette myself, take it to an aftermarket shop save some money definitely also probably true uh but with this you're kind of paying more for the yanko name you're paying for a limited production run that's supposed to be a collectible kind of thing um you're paying for the turnkey nature you don't have to do one ounce of research you like if you have money and you're ready to throw down some money on a really cool corvette this is one that you can get from a dealer like i just walk into my local chevy dealer i go hey here's some money Give me something that I could turn the key on and never think about again. Oh, yeah. And by the way, if I break it, I want to bring it back and put it on your doorstep. So like enthusiasts like me, we probably would try and save a couple bucks. We probably would go the route of specking out our own type of build with the things that we want, you know, going to picking out a shop or doing it ourselves. But if you just want to be it's it's two different customers, right? So there's there's two different customers, which is important to keep in mind with something like this. Still a ton of money. I will give you that. It is one hundred thousand dollars for a package not even including a car is a lot of money it's something to consider but i think that this car still definitely has its place in the market here so what do you guys think tell me uh your opinion on this 1000 horsepower that's crazy to say 1000 horsepower dealer package that you can get with a warranty without having to turn a single wrench and having somebody to fix it all for you too um you can do all that with uh with the 20 24 slash 25 twin turbocharged corvette yanko sc so let me know what you guys think thank you for the likes thank you for the subscriptions i appreciate your support over the last couple of videos i've been seeing a lot of likes and subs come in you guys are the best um i appreciate you very much i will catch you all next time